Okay, this is my uh, this is my third attempt to try to get this audio to work here. It sounds like it's working now. So uh, let's talk a little bit about C++ classes. Let's go into these objects here. Um, if you don't quite know what a class is, you're going to get a kind of crash course on this. And then I'll make a separate video to kind of maybe discuss a little bit more about really what's happening. So first things first, I'm going to go uh, create a new project. And uh, I'm going to make a Win32 console application here. And let's see, I am going to make, I'm going to call this creating, oop, i got to move my window up here a little bit, creating uh, classes. That's what I'm just going to call this. All right, this is console application. So no GUI, no GUI or anything like that. So. And uh, this is just Visual Studio, so nothing nothing crazy going on here. All right, so created our little standard uh, main method here, and uh, we're going to go outside our comfort zone here really quick, and I'm going to change something. We're going to come over to... I don't know why that did that. Uh, we're going to come over to this area here, and we're going to go and say right-click on the, uh, the actual project itself. We're going to right-click... And I wish I would go to the left. Can I get the, yeah, that works. We're gonna go add and uh, new item here. And uh, do, do, do. we are going to, well, it's gonna ask if we wanna add a C++, C, uh, C++ file or a header file. Actually, we wanna add a new class, which um, a nice little thing we can say is just add class and that'll generate you can see here Visual C++. It'll generate a C++ class. Hit Add. And then it'll give us kind of this little wizard here. And it'll say, well, what do you want to call it? And I'm just going to call this Welcome. We're going to call this Welcome. And you can see it filled out a ton of these fields for me. So, uh, And yeah, I want this to be public access. You'll learn about modifiers later, what a public, private, and uh, protected all means. So then I'm just going to hit Finish. And it's going to generate some files for us here. And i got to move back over this way here. All right, so all right, so this is what I'm kind of mid for. See, I'm going to indent this because I like formatting. I like being able to easily, easily distinguish between what's going on in the code. Uh, when I can read, when it gets too much, it gets a little straining on your eyes and you drive yourself crazy. So, all right. <clears throat> so let's see. What did this generate for us? Well, it generated a header file. And that kind of lets the uh, compiler know, well, these are the types of methods and fields and properties I'm expecting uh, for this class to have. And then it also created us, uh, created for us the actual C++ CPP. Um, actually created the actual file for us and then it included the header file for us so that when it calls these uh, constructors and destructors and methods and all sorts of stuff like that, that it will uh, look back at the header file um, these are kind of like the precursors, if you will, and the other tutorials you look at how functions are defined, right? We had to make a, a precursor above uh, our main method here. And now instead, uh, that's kind of what this is doing a little bit, where it's kind of letting the compiler know, oh, I'm expecting uh, these types of return types and all sorts of stuff. So, <clears throat> so going ahead here. Uh, you'll see down here, it is a modifier called public. That means that anybody and anything in your entire project can see that as long as uh, it can see the class. So, And you'll see what that means here in a second. Um, so it created what's called a constructor for us, an empty constructor. And this is basically the default way that, <clears throat> that the... Uh, that the class is created. And right now it's empty. Uh, you can see there's no parameters being passed. And it works a lot like a function in the sense that um, that you can pass values to it. But you also notice though that there's no declaration type. Uh, that's because this doesn't have a return type of anything. It's actually kind of like an initializer telling the code that, hey, I'm expecting, I'm, I'm going to call this uh, function, if you will, and I expect to initialize uh, certain uh, fields and properties, and you'll see how we do that. And this is what's called a D constructor, and you'll note the little, uh, little squiggly in front of it here. I can never remember what that's called for whatever reason. Uh, I probably should for the purpose of my future videos here, but uh, yeah, this is just the D constructor, and essentially what that's doing is uh, 
when the class is uh, deleted from the uh, from the stack when it's removed and all the memory is added back to heap, uh, essentially this is this is called when it's deleted, and then you can uh, do some really interesting things in there. We're not going to do anything really with it, um, just because uh, for the sake of this video, there's there's nothing really that complex that we're doing that really needs to happen in here. So you'll see we actually won't initialize this. We will initialize this, though. So those are the first two things. Uh, I'm going to go up here, though, and I'm going to make a... I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to make a modifier called private. I see the little IntelliSense is telling me what to do here. And uh, we're going to do we're going to work with a couple strings here too uh, while we're at it. And I think people should be familiar with those if you're working with classes. If you're not, uh, you should brush up on some strings, uh, whether it's from some of the videos that uh, are posted from me or other people. So, all right. So I do need to uh, I do need to uh, all right. Well, we do need to include the uh, the uh, string, the string files here, the string header files here, and then we can actually declare. And notice I did std and two uh, two semicolons, uh, signifying that I'm calling a namespace. And don't worry about namespaces right now. This is just uh, for purpose of explanation. And I'm going to say string. And now we're going to create a string called welcome message. And I'm just going to make a comment here. I'm going to say welcome message to be displayed. And all right, so <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure I want to make sure you guys can see that. Yep, you can. So all right, so all right, welcome message to be displayed. And Let's see, we have a public welcome, and then let's also make uh, one more method that says, uh, let's see, void display welcome message. We're going to make that underneath the public accessor so that anybody can see it. Um, private or modifiers are modifiers that, that tell the code, uh, the compiler essentially, hey, this is a uh, field or a property that is only available to this class, only this class can see it, and no other ones, not even inherited classes. So, um, and again, inherited classes will come uh, maybe a couple more videos here. But so, all right, so that's a pretty basic class. And now let's go back. Let's go over to our welcome CPP, our C++ file here, and let's do something in the constructor here. And typically, if you've come from other languages, it would be uh, this dot and you would see that you'd have your options coming up, but it doesn't work that way. In C++, you have to actually uh, manage your own pointers. In other languages like Java and C Sharp and uh, I don't know, whatever else, uh, will manage pointers for you and memory references and all sorts of stuff. C++, is, it's, it's strictly up to you to handle this. So you're actually going to say this, you're going to do a minus sign and then a greater than sign. And you can see here, now I can see some things. And remember I was talking about how this is public and this is private. Um, a really interesting thing, uh, as long as I'm calling uh, properties within its own class, within its own methods and, or functions, I can access its own fields all I want. But I just can't do it outside of it. So here we're going to make a default message. And I'm going to say... Uh, welcome message. This is our welcome message. And there we go. We just set our welcome message. That's it. So now when this is created, uh, you can see plus one overloaded. When this is created, when our class gets uh, constructed, uh, it's going to initialize this property. It's going to initialize this to be equal to this is a welcome message. So and this is our deconstructor, our deconstructor. I'm going to capitalize C so it's a little bit easier to read. Deconstructor, and we're not in interested in this right now. And in fact, even if I deleted it, I it, it wouldn't even matter because it will automatically generate a deconstructor, an empty deconstructor like this one, uh, as kind of like a, a 
safety measure, I guess, if you will. That's what the code will do for you. So um, if these are initialized, you can initialize them yourselves. And so, all right. Uh, so I want to also display our message here. And the way to do that is we're going to declare welcome. And then again, two semicolons. And now we're going to say display welcome message. And this is a void, or let's see, display welcome message. It declares it as an a, uh, int for some reason. Did I declare that as an int? No, I did a, did a void. That's what I thought. Okay, I don't know why it was telling me that. Okay, so anyways, yeah, void. Display welcome message. And uh, we are going to include up here our IL stream because we want to print something out to the console and we need that. And we'll also do using namespace std, the standard namespace. Uh, all right, so, and technically if I really wanted to, I didn't need to include this. I could have just done std, two semicolons, right, and C out. Um, and I could have done the exact same thing back here in our class over here. I could have actually just done using std up here, and I wouldn't have to type that. But it's always important to be able to uh, sometimes be able to know where <coughs> namespace uh, methods are coming from. So, all right, and we're just going to do C out, right, two less than signs, like always, and we'll just go uh, this uh, welcome message. It's as simple as that. There's nothing else to it. So now, uh, let me zoom down go down here. So now, uh, when we call this method, it will just display the welcome message. And notice that we do not have to do too much coding or anything like that. We have just this little, uh, this little function that belongs to the class welcome. And we have this property called welcome message uh, that belongs to welcome. And essentially, all we're going to do is display that. So now that we have this class, now that we have this built, we're going to go over to our creating classes where our main function belongs here. And we're just going to declare it by uh, adding the uh, by including the header file. So you do include, and you can see it actually brings it up for me here. Welcome. I don't need to put a semicolon after that. Or colon, colon, semicolon, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to say welcome. Uh, and I'm going to call, cl uh, I can't call a class. I'm going to say welcome. I'll, I'll call this, right? You declare like anything else, you declare a data type, and you give it a variable name. I just gave this as a variable. It doesn't have to be welcome. It can be anything. Um, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything. And then it actually it'll call the constructor for us here. And uh, I don't have to say in equals new anything, actually. It'll just declare the constructor, which is pretty nice, so... All right, so welcome, welcome, right? <laughs> welcome, welcome. This is our variable, and this is our class that we just created. And I'm just going to say welcome dot, and see here, now I, I can't see my actual welcome message uh, because it's, it's a private property of the class. Um, but I can see the display welcome message function, which is a public uh, property or function public function of the class. So I'm just going to double click that or type it, whichever you need to. Right? And it's a function, so we need our two little parentheses and then semicolon. And that's really it. And now let's build this. And it takes a second here. So okay, so everything's good. So now I'm going to do debug uh, control F5 or just start without debugging. Check that out. It displayed the uh, message. This is a welcome message. So pretty sweet, pretty slick. Uh, that's just a really big, uh, maybe over some people's heads, crash course. And we're going to go a little bit more into that. And you'll, st as we start to work more with classes, you'll start to uh, you'll start to play around by it, with it by yourself and seeing what types of things work, what types of things don't. And uh, you'll get error outputs. And just pay attention to what your outputs are telling you. And before just clicking in the very first thing, look at all, look at, don't look at all, but look at some of the errors and try to see if some of them might relate because it's simple, it can be as simple as missing a, a, a colon at the end of a, uh, at the end of a, of a modifier or, or a semicolon and it'll, it'll cause a lot of issues. So, um, yeah, have fun with this, play with this, and, uh, we'll see you in the next video.